Hello, today we're looking at breathing and gas exchange in the body. Breathing and gas exchange. Now the first thing to remember and understand is why breathing and gas exchange is so important. And what do we mean by gas exchange? Well, I'm sure you all know that we breathe so that oxygen can be brought into the body. But not only oxygen is brought not only is oxygen brought into the body but we also remove carbon dioxide we remove carbon dioxide oxygen is really important because it's needed for something called respiration it's needed for respiration carbon dioxide is produced from respiration from respiration also important to remember that we breathe out another gas. People often forget this one, but this is um, also one that's removed. This is water vapor. Water vapor, water in its gas form. This is also removed from the body when we breathe. Now it's probably important to make a note about what we mean by respiration and why it's so important. So the idea is that respiration provides energy for all the cells in the body. Respiration provides energy for all the cells in the body and therefore they all need oxygen and therefore breathing is really important for that process to remove the carbon dioxide and to bring oxygen into the body. Let's take a look at what's in the air that we breathe in and what's in the air that we breathe out. So the top diagram here, this is a pie chart, it shows the percentage of the different gases in the air when we inhale. So this is inhaled air. Inhaled air. You'll see that oxygen is about 21%, carbon dioxide is a tiny amount, 0.04%, and we have nitrogen gas, which is 78%. People often forget that most of the air is nitrogen, and that's about 78% of the air is nitrogen. That's in the air that we breathe in. Now, once that air has been in the body and then is breathed out again, this is what we find in the exhaled air. Exhaled air. You'll notice that the oxygen is now 16% before it was 21%. Carbon dioxide has gone up by quite a lot, it's now at 4%. However, the nitrogen stays the same, stays at 78%. The, there is an increase in the other gases in the air, so it's gone from 1% to about 2%. And this is mainly because when we exhale air, exhale air, when we breathe out air, it contains more water vapor, more water vapor than the air we breathed in. Okay, so probably important to make a note here that in terms of the different gases, with oxygen, there is a decrease in the amount in the air that we exhale compared to the air that we breathe in. Carbon dioxide increases. Water vapor increases a little bit as well. And nitrogen gas stays about the same. There's no change in nitrogen gas. And this is mainly because nitrogen is not either used by the body or produced by the body either. So there's no change in the nitrogen gas. The next thing I want to look at is how breathing is actually achieved in the body. We're going to use a breathing model. And this helps us to understand how breathing happens. How breathing happens in the body. So here we have a piece of apparatus. You may have seen something like this before, but it helps us to understand how breathing happens in the body. It's a model. Here is a diagram of that model. So we've got a photograph of the apparatus and a diagram. We're going to label the different parts and see how they relate to actual parts in the body. So again, you can follow along with the work along sheet found in the description. We have the top part there, the pipe leading in, that's called the windpipe. And if you're using the, a more technical science word, we'd call that the trachea. That brings air into the body. The glass container 
represents the rib cage that's the ribs and all the muscles that surround the lungs and in red there the balloons these represent the lungs right at the bottom there we have a perhaps a new label for you to learn this is called the diaphragm diaphragm a diaphragm is a flat muscle that helps with breathing found at the bottom of the lungs that's the diaphragm let's see how this works the diaphragm moves down that causes the lungs to inflate and air is drawn in when the diaphragm moves up the lungs will push air out and this process repeats diaphragm down air in and so on this is how the diaphragm helps to fill the air fill the lungs with air and empty them of air so we can make a quick note of that we can see here that the diaphragm has moved downwards in the first diagram so the air is drawn into the lungs air is drawn into the lungs and in the second diagram the diaphragm has moved upwards so therefore air is removed from the lungs air removed from the lungs this is not the only way that breathing happens though remember this is a breathing model it's a model and we often use models in science so a model is there because it helps us understand something scientific that's going on a model helps us to understand as we said this is not the only way that air is drawn in and removed from the lungs let's have a look at a slightly more accurate picture or slightly more accurate diagram of the lungs so here we have the lungs with the trachea supplying air to them there are a couple of other labels that we need to add here those kind of orangey yellow color there are the ribs and we have muscles and the diaphragm so let's just label those they're on, found on both sides in fact the ribs and the muscle but over here we have the ribs in between the ribs we find muscle and at the bottom there as we've already described is the diaphragm be careful of the spelling of that it's got a silent g near the end diaphragm we're going to look at how inhaling happens in other words how air moves into the lungs the first thing to remember is that the diaphragm moves down so we've covered this already the, my, the diaphragm moves down but also the muscles make the ribs move upwards and outwards move up and out we could show that with some arrows this is what we mean by upwards and outwards remember the diaphragm moves down so those things happen at the same time and here's the sciencey bit this causes the air pressure to reduce so the air pressure reduces inside the lungs so air moves in air moves in this is because air pressure is lower is lower on the inside compared to the outside that means air is going to be made to be drawn in what happens when we exhale so during exhaling in other words breathing out the opposite things happen so the ribs will move down and inwards the diaphragm will move upwards as shown by those arrows so let's make a note of that the diaphragm moves upwards or moves up the muscles make the ribs move down and in as we can see by the arrows there and therefore the air pressure inside the lungs increases the air pressure inside the lungs increases so air moves outwards and this process continues 24 hours a day seven days a week so these are the key points to help us explain how air is drawn into the lungs and moves out in other words how 
breathing happens. Okay, so lots covered in this video. Um, you can, of course, download the work along sheet that's found in the description below and add these notes to your own version. And that way you don't have to keep coming back to the video for revision. However, there was a lot covered, so you may need to go over this one or two more times. But other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.